morning again. So my name is Dr. Victor Job, and today I'll be giving a presentation on numerical study of MHD convective nanofluid flows within a corrugated trapezoidal enclosure. Now, free convective flows within trapezoidal enclosures are very useful in the design and operation of heat exchangers and solar collectors. It is also important in the understanding of fluid flows and heat transfer in microchannels, as well as the cooling of microelectromechanical or MEMS systems. However, the heat transfer performance in these types of systems are often limited by the low thermal conductivities of commonly used heat transfer fluids such as water, oil, or ethylene glycol. And as a result of this, the use of nanofluids has been identified as an innovative method of heat transfer enhancement in these systems. Greater heat transfer enhancement has been shown to be achieved in corrugated trapezoidal geometries as compared to rectangular geometries. And this has been seen in the literature in studies like Mamoun et al and Joban Gunakala and many other research articles. However, the effects of sidewall inclination angle and Eckert number, which is related to viscous and joule dissipation effects within fluids, the effect of these parameters on convective nanofluid flows have not yet been studied. Therefore, the aim of this investigation was to investigate the influence of the sidewall inclination angle of trapezoidal enclosures and the Eckert number on the unsteady flow and heat transfer phenomena in alumina water and SWCNT in water nanofluids. So now we will come to the description of the problem and the mathematical model used. The schematic diagram shown in this figure uh, is comprised of the trapezoidal enclosure, which has a corrugated bottom wall that has temperature T2. So this bottom wall is isothermally heated. And the side walls of the trapezoidal enclosure are isothermally cooled with temperature T1. And also, these side walls are inclined at an angle psi to the y axis. The top wall of the trapezoidal enclosure is thermally insulated so that there is no transfer of heat um, through this wall. There is also the presence of an applied magnetic field, which has magnetic flux B0, which is applied horizontally, that is in the x direction. Some assumptions used in this problem are as follows. The magnetic Reynolds number was assumed to be very small for this problem. The electric force that is induced by the applied magnetic field is neglected, as well as thermal radiation effects. And the Bosonesque approximation is used in order to describe the buoyancy forces within the fluid. Based on these assumptions and the description of the problem, we arrived at the following governing equations, which are the continuity equation, which describe the conservation of mass within the fluid, the momentum equations in the x and y directions, and the energy equation, which describes the temperature within the nanofluids. We also have corresponding initial conditions and boundary conditions according to the description of the problem given previously. Now, in order to solve this coupled system of nonlinear differential equations with their boundary and initial conditions, we made use of the mixed finite element method with piecewise linear interpolation on triangular elements as shown in the mesh diagram below. And we also made use of the polynomial pressure projection stabilization in order to ensure consistency of the numerical solution obtained. We used a mesh ultimately with 8,148 elements in order to ensure that the numerical solution obtained is sufficiently accurate. And this finite element method was implemented in MATLAB. So now we will come to the main results obtained in this study. So first we have streamlined plots shown here for AL203, that means alumina, water, nanofluid, for different values of the side wall inclination angle, psi. And what we observed here is that when the side wall inclination angle was increased from zero degrees to 45 degrees, there was an increase in the intensity of flow circulation within the trapezoidal enclosure. And this occurs as a result of an increase in the length of the isothermally heated corrugated bottom wall. 
which allowed for greater buoyancy forces to be um, generated within the enclosure or within the fluid. The same trend was observed in the case of the SWCNT water nanofluid. However, on comparing the two fluids, we observed that the flow circulation intensity is greater in the case of the alumina water nanofluid and smaller in the case of SWCNT water nanofluid. And this is primarily due to the fact that SWCNT, which means single wall carbon nanotube nanoparticles, has a much lower thermal expansion coefficient and hence associated um, lower buoyancy forces within the trapezoidal enclosure. We also see here a figure depicting isotherm plots for alumina water nanofluids for different values of the sidewall inclination angle. And we see here that as the angle of inclination of the sidewalls is increased, there is an increase in the temperature within the nanofluid. And the same trend is observed in the case of the SWCNT water nanofluid. However, the temperature uh, within the SWCNT water nanofluid is lower than that of the alumina water nanofluid. And this is due to the greater thermal conductivity within the, in, or in the case of SWCNT based nanofluids. So we also see results in the uh, case of increased Eckert number and the impact of that on the streamlines in the case of alumina water nanofluid. And we observe an increase in the flow circulation intensity with increased Eckert number. And we also observe an increase in the temperature within the um, nanofluid with increased Eckert number. However, we did not include any plots, corresponding plots for the SWCNT water nanofluid because there was no significant change observed. And this is as a result of the lower thermal expansion coefficient in the case of that particular nanofluid. So now we come to the influence of sidewall inclination angle on the heat transfer rate, and that is measured using the average nozzle number on the corrugated bottom wall. And we observed in this study that the average nozzle number is highest when the sidewall inclination angle is near to 45 degrees, and that is the case for both the alumina water and the SWCNT water nanofluids. We observed finally that the average nozzle number is increased, is reduced, sorry, for an increase in the Eckert number in the case of the alumina water nanofluid. However, there was no significant change observed for the SWCNT water nanofluid. So in conclusion, in this study, we found that the velocity and the temperature of alumina water nanofluid is increased with an increased Eckert number. We found that the rate of heat transfer at the corrugated bottom surface may be enhanced by reducing viscous and joule dissipations, that is um, related to the Eckert number. The flow circulation and fluid temperature is increased when we increase the angle of inclination of the sidewalls of the enclosure. And finally, the heat transfer rate on the corrugated wall is highest when the angle of inclination of the sidewalls is around 45 degrees Celsius, um, degrees. And this is considered, this is consistent with the results obtained by Mamoun et al. in 2010. So here are some references that were used in the preparation of this presentation and also in the preparation of the present research work. And we have come to the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. And if you have any question, feel, feel free to ask it at this time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Joe. Are there any questions? Okay. Um, one a comment I would make is uh, the, the trapezium is symmetric, so you could have used symmetry to reduce the number of um, terms that you had to uh, use in your mathematical model so that you can get a quicker solution. Yeah? Well, um, it is true that the, the trapezoidal um, geometry used here was initially taken as being symmetrical. Um, right. I did not um, intentionally say, okay, well, I will make it symmetrical in order to um, 
make this, let's say, the, the um, solution of it or the analysis of it uh, more easy or anything like that? Because um, it wouldn't actually make a big difference in, let's say, obtaining the numerical solution if the trapezoidal geometry um, would have been symmetric or not. However, um, in future work, we can look at non-symmetric trapezoidal geometries in, and uh -huh. see what, really, that, what would be um, the difference in the numerical results obtained. Okay, I wasn't going to do that. I was just saying that symmetry, because it's symmetric, you could reduce the number of, you can reduce the number of um, the size of your, your finite element model. Um, yes, it can. It and then, yeah. It and the other, the, you had the height of the corrugation, is that standard or is it something that you could vary? That is something that, um, well, it was not um, uh, in the model constructed, it was not um, put as being variable. What was uh -huh. varied was the angle of inclination of the side walls only in terms right. of the geometric uh, configuration of the problem. But it can be in, again, maybe future work, we can look at varying um, heights of the trapezoidal enclosure. However, that was something that was non-dimensionalized. It was used as the characteristic link in non-dimensionalizing the problem. The, the, I'm talking about the corrugations at the bottom. Oh, the, the corrugations. Okay. Yeah. Um, the amplitude of the corrugations. Right. Um, well, that is something that was already investigated in a previous um, work that was done in 2016. Okay. Um, so I had not included it in this particular um, study, but that results were um, investigated about that particular influence of the amplitude of corrugation. Right. And did you, can you explain why there was no change in the um, SWC NT uh, values? Okay. Um, so the main reason for that is that um, the this um, particular problem or the fluid flow in this particular problem is buoyancy driven. And um, so it would be sensitive to the um, type of, non of um, fluid that is used here. So the problem here is that water intrinsically has a relatively low thermal expansion coefficient. That means it does not respond as well to um, buoyancy forces as let's say something like, a, um, like gas or something like that. Um, in the case of the alumina nanoparticles, that had increased the sensitivity of the, well, what we call the base fluid um, considerably, which means that there would have been greater, um, a greater effect on the results than the SWCNT um, nanoparticles, which would have actually decreased the sensitivity of the um, nanofluid that results um, as compared to the alumina nanoparticles. Okay. So it's a matter of sensitivity due to the change in the thermophysical properties of the nanofluid. All right. Are there plans to extend your work to turbulent flow? To turbulent flow? Well, I had not considered that as yet. Um, that would require, um, I would say, a significantly different skill set that I would have to obtain in order to look at those types of problems. But that is something that I could look at in the future, because that is a very important um, area of research to look at, especially with regards to convective flows. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. J.